okay and um so all right so as as what um uh, the topic say is uh duple sso with uh, azure ad um so something i would like to say is um i may i i'm not a drupal uh, uh guy and uh, drupal is new to me uh, but i work more on the identity side uh, so you may be pick up that i talk a lot a lot about uh, identity instead of drupal uh, so uh, i'm happy for anyone to interrupt me um, if they need to uh, I try my best to answer uh, the questions. Um, yeah, if you need me to. So uh, let's start. So I think uh, a lot of people know what is single sign-on, um, but just in case you know you don't know, which is pretty much allowed you to um, sign in once, and uh, it will be automatically signed into the other uh, web application, which is under the same um, cycle of trust. And um, and the other thing is um, the good thing for single sign-on, you, you don't need to have maintain a separate credential and in every application. So um, I find out in the um, a lot of identity platform then support single sign-on for Drupal. So this is some of the uh, uh, like uh, identity. Uh, platform that you can use quite quite good actually uh, even though Drupal itself can be the uh, what we call identity uh, provider so um, so for single sign-on the main concept is authentication and authorization uh, what's that mean is uh, offer uh, authentication is to identify who you are and um, mainly is two um, two kinds of protocol. One is the SAML, the other one is OpenID uh, protocol that we normally use uh, for authorization, uh, which is pretty much is determine what resources the user can actually access after authentication. So uh, OAuth two is a protocol uh, protocol standard that you use to authorize people. So when we talk about um, uh, single sign-on, that is mainly uh, two party will be involved. Uh, of course, it's got more, but the major two party is the what we call identity provider and service provider. The identity provider is provide um, the services to store the user identity, and also when uh, the service provider requests something, it will be response with uh, the user data. Uh, that's the uh, that whatever they claim to be able to see. Um, so that is what what the um, IDP uh, identity provider re uh, playing the the serving the uh, responsibility. And for the SP, uh, it's purely what's uh, serving the uh, user, whatever, um, to provide the protected resources uh, when they request it with the access token and often locations uh, assertion uh, in that case. So, um, okay. So, uh, we talk about two um, things is the SAML, which is um, the full name is Security Assertion Makeup Language. It is a very well established uh, secure protocol actually, and has been utilized by a uh, quite widely government or uh, industry um, uh, to use the SAML, or you can say it's more uh, traditional, Old, old ways to do it as well and um, and it's, it's all its data is in the xml format and it's doing the uh, data trans transport through the simple http or soup so before you um, authenticate what you need to do is exchange the architecture 
uh, artifact between the IDP and SP to establish a trust relationship. So um, what that mean is you need to exchange the metadata, uh, maybe uh, the endpoint because you want to uh, sending the, uh, the grant uh, access to back to the uh, SP after the user is uh, authenticated through the IDP. And uh, during the time, the IDP also checking the uh, certificate between uh, IDP and SP. So that's why they need to uh, exchange the certificate. And how you're going to connect uh, between these two party also uh, will be defined the method within the uh, XML. So this is one of the example for the XML metadata. So you can see, um, I, yeah, uh, you can see it's specified uh, the identity ID, which is uh, uh, identifier, a unique identifier that need to identify uh, where, what, where I talking to um, and where should I, um, uh, as a, a unique identifier to say who you are, uh, where the request is coming from, that kind of things. And the second thing you maybe notice is the um, whether the request going to be signed or not. Um, what is the certificate that you try to exchange? So uh, you can see it's a lot of information. So, um, so when you do authentication, actually is involve um, several steps. Um, uh, should be more complicated, but already this diagram already uh, simplifies that. So, uh, but because it's all behind the scene, the user doesn't notice. So, um, it, it's good to if you as admin to understand because later on, if the user have a problem, uh, you're able to help because a lot of things is behind the scene. It didn't see, um, the, you, you can't see the, the transaction or something unless you use some tools like um, the browser extension. If you need uh, allow to install extension, something called SAMO encoding, message encoder, something like that. But most of the time it's like a black box to the user. So the first step is the user try to go to a web browser using a web browser to request a page or something like that or resources, which is step two. It will uh, send a request to the, uh, the service provider. And the service provider realize mm, you haven't log in so it will be sent the user to the ad for authentication so once is the user is authenticate which is step five uh, it will uh, issue a SAML token and the SAML token will be sent back to the web browser uh, which is within the 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 uh, the web section, you know, the uh, the uh, request section. And then once it's got the SAMO token, where's my browser uh, mouse? Yeah, here. And it will be, con um, get the uh, web browser will be contain, get the uh, SAMO token together to, uh, with the information that it's request and send it to the service provider. And once uh, the service provider is recognized or validate, that's, uh, that's the user have the privilege to assess the resources. Um, in that case, it's a page. Then it will um, return the page to the user through the web browser. So that is uh, how the SAML uh, authenticate user. So uh, uh, is this, am I go too fast? Or 
has I this to show. So all good. Cool. Yeah, all good. Okay, so I just continue. If this is not too fast. Okay. Is this very interrupt? Got the so I should move a little bit. Okay. So in here, uh, after we go through the um, authenticate uh, the flow, uh, that's this one will be more easy to understand. Um, that I think because you may think, okay, I got you got the SAML identity um, provider. Where, Is it where the same thing as Gavint? Ah. Uh? Okay. I just continue. So uh, I talk about the uh, O of uh, 2.0. So in your diagram, I can't see the authorization uh, server uh, in my previous slide. So here is more clear in the diagram saying how the authorization server involved when you do single sign on. So you, you have the same thing, um, the user start request something, you got the bare assertion for uh, in the SAML sense, um, and then actually is go to uh, authorization server. And once it's got the access token, it will be sent to the resource server to ask for the page. So um, in my previous slide, it's actually because the, the uh, service provider also carry the role for authorization. So that's why you didn't see uh, it's an it's a, uh, icon, you know, or um, uh, area that I talk about the authorization. So the authorization is, in some cases, maybe is combined with the service provider as well, provide as kind of services. So this is one of the uh, requests, what we call, oh, okay. So it's, I'm talking about the user um, request and then it was sent um, to the identity provider. And that is the, the format of XML format to request uh, uh, a user to authenticate. So uh, we normally say it's off in request. Um, so it is for, authentication. And this one is uh, the response you got from the IDP. Um, once is um, the user is successful sign on and it provides a lot of information um, for the SAML uh, response. Um, so that's why sometimes SAML, they say is very heavy leaving, uh, heavy weight. Uh, you can see, I just captured the this, this small subset, uh, but actually it's got more information um, uh, when you have the look on the full set of response. Uh, so it got uh, defined um, the time condition here, you can see not after, so is your token will be valid between that. Uh, let me see how many, uh, uh, around one hour, you can see it's 07, 30 and 7, 08, 48. So after the, the time, this time, the, the, um, the token that you get, the access token that you got will be expired. And um, this is once you got the access token and use you have after the user authenticates, you will get a, 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 a token that will be saying what you can do with that token. And this is the information you send to the service provider. So once you see the information interpret, uh, then it will know uh, what kind of access you got uh, based on the protected resources uh, so or tell you you don't have uh, the privilege to assess the resources that you're asking so this is the information as if you have the another 
a continuous example. So this is talk about the audience, which is the uh, SP. So it's my web application. It tells it um, what kind of tenant ID uh, in Microsoft, that means is uh, more like your organization indicator. And um, based on what to assess the resources, for example, you based on the, um, your email address and it will tell you what group uh, you entitled to has been granted. Uh, the group is you know, encrypted and um, maybe you have the admin group, you, you maybe have the read access or whatever. The other um, authentication um, protocol is very common nowadays is uh, something called OpenID uh, Connect. So OpenID Connect basically is um, built on top of uh, OAuth 2.0 protocol. And also it's very widely used and, um, and more um, newer, being newer than the SAMO. Um, so I can't remember which year it developed, maybe 2003, something like that. Um, but basically it's have the website and um, uh, mobile application in, in mind. And uh, basically it's using um, uh, a JSON. Uh, web token, JWT, as the, uh, what they call is ID token. So they, they design is mainly is for easy to use and easy to adapt. So um, a lot of developer um, prefer to use uh, that kind of protocol than the SAML because you can see SAML will be a lot of things you need to read and a lot of things you need to handle as well, which is that's why um, OpenID uh, is become more much much uh, popular because it's just uh, uh, one ID you need to uh, look after or handle. And the uh, ID token is uh, digital signed and encrypted if required um, because it's extension of the OAuth 2.0 protocol. So it's actually uh, have the capability to, to support scope and endpoint um, discovery. Uh, scope uh, in the sense is what you, uh, the permission you can do and um, and uh, of the user, um, what what kind of things you, you can retrieve. Uh, that's it kind of what scope means. Pretty much is you to specify what claim or group of claim uh, that you, you uh, that the IDP can return to you. Yeah. So if you ask for a user profile, what um, user attributes uh, will be returned to you, that kind of things. Similar as the SAML, um, before the authentication, you also need to uh, es establish a trust relationship with the IDP. So uh, the IDP to, to es establish the relationship, you need to have a client ID and a, a secret uh, key uh, from the IDP uh, to the uh, service provider. And also, of course, is um, uh, need to have the scope set up because otherwise you, you don't know uh, what you allow to do and what you not allow to do. Um, and once it's set up the, um, the access token or ID token, um, it will need to have an endpoint that it's able to return those information to. So that is the major uh, three things. Uh, of course, it depends on uh, the application. So sometimes we may need more information or the, uh, the application uh, do it differently. Uh, for Azure AD, actually besides using the secret key and the client ID, uh, 
is uh, got the capability to upload uh, certificates as well. Um, so it's got several different way you can do it. Um, and I think one of the guy, uh, Simon, I think uh, he said he's using the Office 365. Uh, that will be very useful because you can um, delegate um, user maybe to use the SharePoint or any uh, Office 365 app application that way. And that is the flow of the uh, authentication flow of the OpenID Connect. So you can see um, that are uh, two endpoints. One is authorized, the other is token. Authorized is more like his authorization to let the user to log in. Token is um, once you got the uh, Login, you got the bear token, and then you can uh, request uh, the real access token. So, uh, so start with um, the user uh, to access the application. So it's not um, because uh, when I, I need to go back, not not necessary is a user in in the in some cases is user as well as the application. Because the, if I um, uh, go through automation process, uh, not necessarily the user will be logging as such. It will using a service account, and it will base on the um, client ID and the security key to do the authentication. So, uh, but anyway, the flow is the same. Uh, no matter it's a user or applications as such. So it will be uh, assess the resources and find out you hasn't uh, got the authentication. So it will be asked you to authorize uh, for application will be present the, uh, sec uh, sec uh, the secret key for user will be locking. Where's my cursor here? Yeah. So the next step is once you of authenticate will be return of authorized code. And, and once you um, got the authorized code, it will be using uh, the bear token to request uh, the access token. And uh, you can see access token and refresh token. Uh, I can talk about later because down to the track, uh, that will be util uh, very useful. Um, and once uh, you got the return access token and refresh token, it will be go back to the web, web browser or whatever the application. Um, then it will ask for um, a valid token, which is um, which is will will be validate um, uh, the the token to see what prefetch you you got. And then it will return corresponding uh, data that you request and under what um, uh, assess uh, the scope that you have and it will return corresponding uh, data because um, in some cases uh, that is, um, for example, like database, um, you maybe have a row, row, um, row level assess. So, even though a whole database, you've got the thousands of records, maybe you just return secure data is maybe 10, 10 row or something like that. Yeah. So the refresh token will be very useful after a short period of time as, as what it's talked about here is the access token when the access token is expired. This is how we used uh, uh, the, the um, Azure AD is using the refresh token to request another new access token. So the default, um, I think the access token is around uh, an hour or something. So the refresh token actually won't be uh, expired until 90 days or something like that. Yeah, so you can, you don't need to continue um, uh, asking user to continue login uh, for every hours. This is the refresh token purposes. Okay, so um, 
as the Jupo is new to me, uh, but so far what I can find, <laughs> I can tell you, uh, you, you guys may be much uh, more familiar with than me, but so far what I found is um, it got the, uh, for SAMO and OpenID Connect uh, all of client modules, uh, they got, um, they got uh, this one, which is called SAMO Service Provider. Mainly is the, I, f I try to install, it's a uh, mainly is for uh, Mini Orange. Um, it sounds Mini Orange has been very um, popular or, or provide a lot of services. Um, so, uh, so, that's why I think this one is, is quite good, uh, not just because of um, it support the SAMO. Um, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but the other um, modules that um, it seems this module also support the headless and decouple uh, Drupal website, um, which is what um, we are using in GA, uh, using the headless and decouple. I had uh, my uh, I haven't tried that before, uh, so I don't know how how that work. But sounds quite easy. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I may be wrong. But anyway, um, the other one I think is quite useful um, is uh, OpenID Connect Microsoft um, AD client. Uh, it's based on Open general I, uh, open ID connect but it's it's got the uh, the Azure AD uh, capability some features that uh, the other open ID uh, connect the generic open ID connect modules doesn't have and take advantage for example is the Microsoft graph API which is really uh, useful if you uh, don't don't know what uh, uh, user data uh, information uh, is available, then you can use a different endpoints to, um, to get the, um, using different endpoint, the, uh, I think it's the using the user inform, yeah, endpoint to retrieve the user profile attribute. The other thing is using the Azure AD group to match uh, the Drupal role. So I I haven't tried, but I think the idea is using the Windows um, uh, AD group, uh, and then uh, it will be con uh, managed by uh, the same team, like uh, the Windows team will use the group policy um, and identify which group you got entitled to and it will can corresponding apply to the uh, Drupal roles. That may be very useful because uh, in the Azure it's got the uh, role based um, uh, uh, control access, that kind of thing. So that will be very useful. And the other thing is the single sign out. Um, when you do a single sign on uh, that's mean allowed you to assess um, the inform the web application is in your uh, circle of trust uh, but when you sign out it will be uh, allowed you to have log out to the other uh, SSO session uh, as well so it can be a very useful things um, and um, the other one is um, I think is uh, also supports uh, headless and the decouple uh, for the open ID. And also I find uh, the Drupal also can be IDP as well. So they got quite good um, diversity. Um, I think the people will ask, uh, what is the SAMO different to open ID connect? What is the differences? Uh, so that is what I found so far um, is because one is new, one is uh, more well um, established and a lot of people still using it. 
uh, and also SAMOS will be more features like uh, more information provide. Open ID is because for the web and um, mobile, so it will be a very simple um, uh, identity uh, basic authentication um, or data pass through that kind of things. Uh, however, uh, for SAML, you need to handle a lot of XML, which is maybe a bit uh, too much to handle uh, and not easy to implement compared with Open ID. Um, and um, open ID is really will uh, work very well with API. So um, unfortunately, I didn't have a demo, but um, I set up a, a demo, uh, not uh, not my demo, but someone's uh, have get the uh, video. So, uh, but one for one for uh, one thing that I want to. Um, emphasizes uh, in the um, uh, video. Um, I don't know whether I have enough time to, to play or not. Uh, so it depends on whether anyone still interested or no one is fall asleep so far, uh, then I can play. Uh, otherwise, um, we can skip it. But the main thing is, um, I think it's after you um, install the service provider modules on Drupal. So this is one of the example is uh, mini orange. Uh, they got the SAML uh, modules that you install. I think a lot of people is very rem uh, familiar with than me, uh, install it and config it. Um, but one thing um, you need to be careful because um, when you turn on uh, the single sign on, uh, you need to ensure you, uh, if this is not working, you ensure you can log back. So always uh, need to be careful because a lot of people is set up the uh, single sign on, however, um, it's not work. So uh, whoever as an admin will be got logged out to the site because they can't do the single sign on and didn't have a separate uh, admin access. But um, for uh, Azure AD site, uh, which what you need to do is uh, register an uh, application. Um, and that is more like is um, how you do it. Um, it's not, you know, rocket science, so very easy. you got a lot of video uh, to help you. Um, So I got a video in here. I'm not sure whether it, it would take five minutes, maybe a bit too long. I, I don't know uh, whether anyone interested or uh, I've been talking too long. Uh, caution to the time. Um, can you speak back or for people like to see the video? Or, or you can watch yourself, uh, doesn't matter. Once you, you can see the title. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the reason why I say so is because I think uh, my personal view is uh, the, uh, the single sign-on is not difficult and you got a lot of resources, but more difficult is uh, how to set up your user lifecycle management. That means is how you how do you get the people on the Azure AD? Uh, so uh, if you got like 10 people, 10 staff, you can manually enter, but if you got thousands of people, it will be hard. So that is a uh, course, um, that is something called uh, user lifecycle management uh, in the identity field. It's a, uh, uh, how do you got the, when the user is on board to your company, how do you provision the information to Azure AD, then you can use that to do single sign on. Uh, and of course, when the user left your company, uh, what you need to do to depermission them out of your Azure AD. And let me move that. Bit. Okay, so um, in the identity, you got um, 
uh, something called Azure AD Connect, um, which allowed you to have different signing methods. So as a identity um, provider, even though you, you can um, have uh, the three common a, uh, way to um, get the people have authenticate. So one thing is called password hash synchronization. What that mean is um, that on premises um, uh, AD, which is on premise as window AD, um, you got the password to for uh, your, uh, your internal network, and you can sync your uh, password to the Azure AD, and all the inf user information will be on um, Azure AD. The pass through authentication means is the the password will be um, passed back to the Windows Server. Active Directory, which is this diagram uh, I, I post in here. Uh, so what happened is when the uh, user need to sign into the IDP, which is the Azure AD, uh, it will pass the password to uh, the AD, uh, the agents, and then pass to the Windows AD. So once it's authenticates in here, then it will pass the um, identity uh, information back to uh, the AAD. So that is how it work uh, in the backend for pass through. That means it's not uh, authenticate purely in the Azure AD, but getting the password pass through. Uh, the password hash will be everything authenticate will be happening in uh, AAD. Um, the other one is Active Directory uh, Federation Services, which is uh, a bit, I think it depends on your company, but it's all the authentication, even though the user um, profile will be uh, validated through the on premises. So, nothing will be um, happen uh, on the Azure AD for authentication. So. And the other thing is um, how to uh, provision uh, the, um, the information to the different uh, application. So that is also very um, useful. Uh, which Azure AD also supports is the call um, SEIM. Uh, pretty much is, um, you can see in Azure AD is contain a lot of inf uh, information like the uh, email address, uh, the manager, job title. So when you provision a user, uh, all this information can uh, be um, passed on to the web application or uh, the service provider in that sense. So you can, so that's why you, you, um, you say uh, when you have a user already authenticate, uh, the user uh, got authenticate and will be automatically create on the service provider site, which is like in in the case is Azure AD and Drupal. So you don't need to manually enter the, uh, we create the user profile on Drupal. Uh, it can, by using the SEIM, mm -hmm. it will be automatically managed that way. But uh, for Azure AD is something you maybe watch out because um, it got the concept is disable user. It's not delete the user account, but disable it. Uh, most of the uh, modules uh, that we're talking about uh, on, for example, in, on Drupal site may not be um, handle the disable a user very well. So something need to watch out. Oh, okay. So I think uh, that's it for me. Thank you and everyone. I stop sharing. Thanks a lot for this. Uh, Alex, does anybody have questions?
I just have more information to be shared along with that. Uh, like I was using the LDAP module with the Drupal uh, to connect with that to directories and all. And that is the use for single sign-on. With the Linux-based system, uh, LDAP is a very good module. If anyone wants to look into that, it's a very useful and easily provide the role mapping. Even the fallback login with the local system is also, you can do that. And you can easily manage everything from the uh, directory and it will automatically create user once you sign in on the uh, SSL. And you can, <clears throat> you don't need to create user on a Drupal system or any other system, just use the uh, module and it will work in that way. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kovin. Uh, Alex, you mentioned a video. Do you have a URL to the video so that I, we can post it in the chat and everybody can have a look at that? Uh, I can find it. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for that. I, I can, and then I can post it there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll just you. mention uh, the the module I've been using is the O365 module. Um, so uh, slightly different approach, but uh, it's been pretty easy to set up and use. So uh, it might be worth it to uh, check out as well. I'll just post a link in the chat also. Yeah. I, I find um, the people has been, uh, the Drupal modules is very easy to use. Um, it's no problem uh, because it's only like five to 10 minutes set up. But I, I think it's um, only when you have problem, then you need to understand the behind the scene to uh, for investigation, that will be a big challenge. Absolutely. No, I mean, whatever, whatever you explain is super important just to understand the basics, but the modules do help a lot. Um, thanks a lot for this, uh, Alice. I'll just stop.